The Deluvian Mechanism is one of the hardest game modes to beat in Deep Broken, but that doesn't mean it has to be impossible for you to beat it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, let's Easy go. Chat. Uh, one Too like easy. chess. I've easily spent over a hundred hours optimizing other PVE game modes, so I was sure that with enough work, I could easily optimize it, and I believe I have found the best strategies in the game to let you complete the Deluvian mechanism every single time and maximize the loot while minimizing your time in the dungeon. This video will be longer than my normal ones, simply because I have to go over good talents, types of builds mantras, stats, and strategies for specific waves. But don't worry, I'll leave chapters if you want to skip around, although I do recommend listening to everything in order, as this video is designed to take you from someone who has never beaten the mechanism before to someone that can easily beat it first try. Alright, starting off, team composition. Having a good team that works well together can make your runs 10 times easier. Generally speaking, the more people you can have in your team up to five players, the better. Honestly, I believe it's impossible to solo the Deluvian mechanism, so sorry solo players, but unless there is major buffs or you're using a cheese method such as high stealth that don't worry will be patched, you will not be able to solo the Deluvian mechanism up to the higher rounds. Although if for whatever reason you only care about the lower tier chests, which can still give you stuff like crit blades, you can solo. But moral of this whole rant is be in a team with as many people as possible. The minimum amount that I would recommend is probably 3, but again 5 people is highly recommended since it can divvy up the amount of aggro that's put on you. And don't worry if you can't find a team, as there is a Deluvian server which you can go into in order to find teammates, or you could even find it in a hell mode server. But each person on your team generally has to play a different role, since if some of these criteria are not met, you will guaranteed lose the Deluvian Trial. These are some of the criteria that you should fit into. A user with graceful flames, this is useful for healing and restoring natural and armor durability. Someone with a blunt weapon to deal with stuff like sand and stone knights. High AoE to deal with the amount of mobs. A guard break crit for stuff like squibbos and NPCs. And finally, if you're consistently playing with a team, then Vow of Mastery is incredibly useful useful, since you have command fight, or return, and all live most importantly. It's important to note that one player can meet multiple of these requirements. For instance, my teammate that runs Silent Heart meets 3 out of 5 of these requirements in our team. Alright, now that we've discussed team composition, let's get on to what build you should actually make for the Deluvian Mechanism, starting with the attunements and what's actually good. I think Flame Charm is definitely one of the best. It has incredibly high AoE on its mantras, you can get free healing from Flame Wisp, eruptions deal incredible damage on their own, and you can get Graceful Flames, which is required if you want to get to round 50. And an attunement that is paired with Flame Charm somewhat frequently is Frost Draw. This attunement has incredibly high burst and passive damage, plus you can get the Crystal Path and Crystal Shrapnel to proc Crystal an insane amount of times the ants monsters, and although it won't be active a lot, you can get Orbital Ice or a little bit of damage reduction, but the main use of Frost Draw is stuff like Frozen Servants and Warden's Blades. Thunder is not really good for the Deluvian Mechanism unless you're trying to cheese with something like Vault Piercer, and again, keep in mind, cheese methods will be patched, so don't go Thundercall. Gale is another top contender. It has arguably the best AoE in the game, as well as having an incredible incredibly fast Mantra and Astral Wind, plus with the amount of mobility Gale provides, it can help you run away from difficult situations, a very good one to consider. Shadow kind of only has Shade Devour, which provides a 20% damage boost to your M1s. Nothing else it has is super useful for the Deluvian Mechanism over other attunements. Iron Sing has Metal Armament, which is incredibly good if you're an M1 focused build. It has stuff like Metal Rain for AoE and Cow Shop for single 
normal target, and it's also incredibly good at regenerating armor. And then finally, we're going to talk about no achievements. The only time you should be using no achievements is if you're making a Silent Heart build, or a build that's specifically only M1s. Seeing as not having an achievement can give you significantly reduced AoE and utility. For your bells, there is three main options. Run it back. Run it back is pretty useless on most grounds, but it's not a terrible option to be invincible against hard hitting enemies like Bounders. Sacred Fields is good team support, and I would consider it the second best bell, since it can essentially let your teammates take half damage, which is incredibly useful. But the bell that I think is hands down the best for the Diluvian mechanism is Corrupt Counter, more specifically the Beam variant. If you don't know, Corrupt Counter gives life steal, and with the amount of damage mobs can deal, you will be healing a lot. What makes it so good is the beam variant can let you infinitely pierce monsters around you, to essentially heal to 100% every time. Plus it does a ton of damage in its own right, letting you one shot stuff like enforcers. Alright, now that we've discussed attunements and what bell you should have, let's discuss stat spreads, because I believe there's only two really good ones in this game mode, and one specific stat spread is significantly better with a good team backing you up. The first is the classic 100 fortitude and 100 power. This gets you brick wall which can prevent you from ragdolling. It's a very useful card if you want an easy to play PvE build, and will give you quite a bit of health in the leftover fortitude post shrine. Plus you get heretic sutra for free as well as piercing will, and if you decide to spec into strength post shrine then you can additionally get lose your mind. The only real downside to doing this is when you use heretic sutra if you're a deep band player or have conquer your fears, you're usually going to regen your sanity super fast, so I wouldn't solely rely on Heretic Sutra and lose your mind. But the next stat spread that I've personally started using on my newer, currently unreleased builds is 30 strength, 50 fortitude, and 50 willpower. This stat spread is amazing because it saves you 70 points in total, while still getting you to the finish, a card that reduces damage by 10% below 30 HP, and exoskeleton. These two talents provide a ton of defense. Now you don't get brick wall and reinforced armor, but that isn't really an issue, because most of the time you can just ragdoll cancel out of attacks, or if you have a decent team, then brick wall isn't really needed since your teammates are normally there and can notice when you're in trouble. And reinforced armor, which you also don't get, doesn't really affect you that much. I've come to learn recently that reinforced armor isn't really it for PvE, since while some things like Threshers have a lot of pen, most things generally won't. But the big, but the big upside to this stat spread is you'll get Berserker pre-shrine. Whenever you knock a mob, you'll gain 20% defense, which is insane for this game mode. Alright, that's the two stat spreads I'd recommend. Now let's discuss the weapons, because overall I would try to get an Enforcer's Hammer or an Enforcer's Axe. At minimum, try to get something like a Grand Sotoraska or an Evan Spear. Keep in mind that Speed Demon is pretty useless here, so the main reason you're picking an Enforcer's Hammer or Axe is for blunt damage or for the insane criticals both weapons have. You'll never really be proccing Speed Demon in this game mode, so that's why an Evan Spear technically does more damage but has a worse crit than the Enforcer weapons. It's up to what you prefer. Now for the enchant, the best is Grim, hands down. You should have one to two of them on your team, simply because whoever has Grim can target the high HP mobs and make them take 20% more damage, which is a universal buff across the team. Your other options include Vampirism, because of all the stuff you're hitting, you're regening quite a bit of health, and the final enchant is Astral. Okay, yeah, I know everyone can't get Astral, but if you do have it, then Astral would be super useful for this game mode. I personally run it when I'm using an Enforcer's Axe for higher damage. For your gear, you want to try to prioritize DVM over anything else, simply because the more DVM you have, the more stuff you're killing, and the more you're health packing. The next thing you should prioritize is HP pips on your gear. Although if you want to skip trying to cook a build entirely, there is 5 builds that were specifically made to synergize for the Diluvian mechanism on my discord. They're all designed to meet different roles, so choose whatever one is the best for you, since they're all very good, and we are also still optimizing these builds to make them even better, so make sure you join up down below. Alright, now let's talk about a few items of interest. The first is Immortality Helmet 
of versus viscosity. The immortality helmet dropped by the immortal guards in the crypt of the unbroken can give you 5 seconds where you cannot be knocked. And this time you can get a health pack or get all lived if you have someone with valve mastery. Viscosity is better when you aren't taking insane damage since it spreads it all over 1 second. In that time you'll probably health pack and stay at higher HP in general. So essentially the immortality helmet is better in a dire situation while viscosity is worse at saving you bad situations, it makes it harder to get into those bad situations. So it just depends on your build and your team what to run. Although I'd say overall, I'd try to prioritize viscosity. The best armor for this is Ignition Deep Delver, purely because of the passive stat gains and the ability to parry perilous attacks. Of course, get Seltor Tide Knight when you can, since that is the best armor for PvE in the game. Now let's talk about specific problematic waves and the strategies I've used to deal with them. Then we'll go over more specific universal strats. On wave 13, there is two sad knights that spawn. You want to try to get people with blunt weapons or mages to deal with it. Wave 25 has two corrupt bounders. While there's not many, if you're not ready for them to appear, they can overwhelm you very quick. The best way to deal with them is to uppercut them and use mantras to stay in the air. If you're a silent heart though, you can just use Manikati to get iframes while attacking them. I'd try to get at least two people on each bounder just so you kill them super fast. Wave 26 has Shadow Sand Knights. Again, you just want to use the blunt or mage weapon strat again, preferably a mage since they take reduced physical damage. From here on out, just repeat the same strategy of using mage or blunt users. Wave 28 has Squibbos and the big guys found in floor 2 that grab you and deal a ton of damage. The best thing to do is have anyone with a guard break critical on the Squibbos and have everyone else target the big guys since if they grab you things can go wrong very fast. Wave 30 has elemental carbuncles. You can just easily outrange them with mantras. Wave 42 is one of the no mantra rounds and it has NPCs on it. The best way to deal with this is by using guard break crits. The mages in your party without very strong M1 damage can just stand back or hold off the enemies for this round. Wave 50 is the big one because there is a lot of tanky and very high range stuff that spawns. However, my group had absolutely zero trouble with this round, as we were able to uppercut the bounders and deal a lot of damage, while everyone else took the aggro of the floor 2 mobs. Alright, now let's go over general strats that apply to every round in the Diluvian mechanism. The first one is simple, just communicate with your teammates. If you're letting them know when you're low, or if there's a mob that you don't think you can deal with, they'll run over and take the aggro. Just like any game, communication is very important here if you don't want to wipe. And the final one is to share the aggro. It's a bad idea if there's 10 things on one person while everyone else is dealing with the same enemy. That again ties back into communication. As long as you let your teammates know that you're being overwhelmed, they can come and assist you. And this has been all the strategy that I have came up with for the Diluvian mechanism. It is incredibly easy to beat with enough preparation and knowing what you're up against. So I'd highly recommend using one of the builds on this channel if you two want to beat wave 50. Anyways, I hope you guys have found my strategies useful and get good luck in your drops in the Diluvian mechanism. Make sure to like and subscribe and check out some of the other PvE content and my Discord linked down below. And I'll see you all next time. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. let's PvK. go.